Hello, True Seekers. Before we begin today's episode, I want to tell you about Abide. Abide is an app that helps you meditate on God's Word, which is something I strongly believe in as a truth seeker. Based on biblical scripture, these audio meditations will center you and draw you closer to Christ. And for a limited time, our listeners will get 25% off a premium subscription when you visit abide.co forward slash true seekers. Get started now with 25% off a premium subscription by downloading the abide app at abide.co forward slash true seekers. You'll get additional stories and meditations, premium music, soothing sounds, and more. Support this show and get 25% off by going to abide.co forward slash true seekers. That's A B I D E dot C O slash true seekers to download the Abide app and get 25% off your premium subscription. And use the preferred promo code True Seekers. Hello and welcome to the Truth Seekers Podcast. A truth seeker is someone who wants to know the truth. They search for what's true and they won't rest until they find it. I am a truth seeker, and if you are too, then you've come to the right place where we will search for truth each week in the stories of the Bible. If you've been following along, then you know that we've been learning about a man named Nehemiah. Nehemiah was a man of faith. He was a leader who returned to the city of Jerusalem and saw the need to rebuild the wall surrounding Jerusalem that had been destroyed when the Babylonians had come to attack. Nehemiah revived the people of Israel living in the land. He appointed them stations at the wall, and each family worked on a different section of the wall. Day and night they worked faithfully to repair the wall surrounding Jerusalem. But this did not happen without opposition. Do you know what the word opposition means? Opposition means to oppose or to come against or to try to stop something from happening. There were people living in the land who did not want to see Nehemiah succeed. And one of those men was named Sanballat. Let's let Nehemiah continue to tell us just what happened. When Sanballat heard that we were rebuilding the wall, he became angry and was greatly incensed. He ridiculed the Jews, and in the presence of his associates and the army of Samaria, he said, What are those feeble Jews doing? Will they restore their wall? Will they offer sacrifices? Will they finish in a day? Can they bring the stones back to life from those heaps of rubble burned as they are? Tobiah the Ammonite who was at his side said, What are they building? Even a fox climbing up on it would break down their wall of stones. Then Nehemiah knew what to do. He went straight to his God and prayed, Hear us, O God! For we are despised. Turn their insults back on their own heads. Give them over as plunder in a land of captivity. Do not cover up their guilt or blot out their sins from your sight, for they have thrown insults in the face of the builders. So we rebuilt the wall till all of it reached half its height, for the people worked with all their heart. But when Sanballat, Tobiah, the Arabs, the Ammonites, and the people of Ashdod heard that the repairs to Jerusalem's walls had gone ahead and that the gaps were being closed, they were very angry. They all plotted together to come and fight against Jerusalem and stir up trouble against it. But we prayed to our God and posted a guard day and night to meet this threat. Meanwhile, the people in Judah said, The strength of the laborers is giving out and there is so much rubble that we cannot rebuild the wall. Also our enemies said, Before they know it or see us, we will be right there among them and will kill them and put an end to the work. Then the Jews who lived near them came and told us ten times over, Wherever you turn, they will attack us. Therefore I stationed some of the people behind the lowest points of the wall at the exposed places, posting them by families with their swords, spears, and bows. After I looked things over, I stood up and said to the nobles, the officials, and the rest of the people, Don't be afraid of them. Remember the Lord who is great and awesome and fight for your families, your sons and your daughters, your wives and your homes. When our enemies heard that we were aware of their plot and that God had frustrated it, we all returned to the wall, each to our own work. From that day on, half of my men did the work while the other half were equipped with spears, shields, bows, and armor. The officers posted themselves behind all the people of Judah who were building the wall. 
Those who carried materials did their work with one hand and held a weapon in the other, and each of the builders wore his sword at his side as he worked. But the man who sounded the trumpet stayed with me. Then I said to the nobles, the officials, and the rest of the people, the work is extensive and spread out, and we are widely separated from each other along the wall. Wherever you hear the sound of the trumpet, join us there. Our God will fight for us. So we continued the work with half the men holding spears from the first light of dawn till the stars came out. At that time, I also said to the people, have every man and his helper stay inside Jerusalem at night so they can serve us as guards by night and as workers by day. Neither I nor my brothers nor my men nor the guards with me took off our clothes. Each had his weapon even when he went for water. When the word came to Sanballat, Tobiah, Geshem the Arab, and the rest of our enemies that I had rebuilt the wall and not a gap was left in it, though up to that time I had not set the doors and the gates, Sanballat and Geshem sent me this message. Come, let us meet together in one of the villages on the plain of Ono. But they were scheming to harm me. So I sent messengers to them with this reply. I am carrying on a great project and cannot go down. Why should the work stop while I leave it and go down to you? Four times they sent me the same message, and each time I gave them the same answer. Then the fifth time Sanballat sent his aid to me with the same message, and in his hand was an unsealed letter in which was written, It is reported among the nations, and Geshem says it is true. The you and the Jews are plotting to revolt, and therefore you are building the wall. Moreover, according to these reports, you are about to become their king and have even appointed prophets to make this proclamation about you in Jerusalem. There is a king in Judah. Now this report will get back to the king. So come, let us meet together. I sent him this reply. Nothing like what you are saying is happening. You are just making it up out of your head. Nehemiah knew they were making up lies just to try to intimidate him and keep him from what God had called him to do. Nehemiah said, They were all trying to frighten us, thinking their hands will get too weak for the work and it will not be completed. But I prayed, oh, I prayed to the Lord my God, and I said, God, now strengthen my hands. One day I went to the house of Shemaiah, son of Deliah, who was shut in at his home. He said, let us meet in the house of God inside the temple and let us close the temple doors because men are coming to kill you. By night they are coming to kill you. But I said, should a man like me run away? Or should someone like me go into the temple to save his life? I will not go. I realized that God had not sent him but that he had prophesied against me because Tobiah and Sanballat had hired him. He had been hired to intimidate me so that I would commit a sin by doing this and then they would give me a bad name to discredit me. And then Nehemiah did the one thing he always knew to do. He prayed. He said, remember Tobiah and Sanballat my God because of what they have done. Remember also the prophet and how she and the rest of the prophets have been trying to intimidate me. But finally, finally the day came after all the opposition, after all the struggle, the wall was finally completed on the 25th of Elul in 52 days. It had taken them 52 days, but the work was completed. And when all our enemies heard about this, all the surrounding nations were afraid and lost their self-confidence because they realized that this work had been done with the help of our God. After the wall had been rebuilt and I had set the doors in place, the gatekeepers, the musicians, and the Levites were appointed. I put in charge of Jerusalem my brother Hanani, along with Hananiah, the commander of the citadel, because he was a man of integrity and feared God more than most people do. I said to them, the gates of Jerusalem are not to be open until the sun is hot. While the gatekeepers are still on duty, have them shut the doors and bar them. Also appoint residents of Jerusalem as guards, some at their post and some near their own houses. Dear truth seekers, what truth did we find in this story? What truth do we learn about the life of Nehemiah and his dedication to rebuilding the wall? There are so many times that Nehemiah could have given up. The opposition to his work was great. 
It did not stop the entire time he was rebuilding the wall. His enemies even began to make up lies about him, and they began to smear his name and say bad things about him. They lied that he was just trying to be the next king and and have power and control, but did you notice that every single time they came against him, Nehemiah turned to God for help. Instead of trying to come against them in his own strength and in his own words, he went to God and prayed to God. He prayed to the Lord to fight for him. He knew his God would defend him. God had called Nehemiah to this work and nothing would stop him. God has called you and I to do a special work for him. You may not know yet what that is, but God will show you just like he showed Nehemiah the work he wanted him to do. And when God calls you to do a special work, there will be some opposition. There will always be enemies of God and his work, but we cannot let this discourage us or stop us from doing what God has asked us to do. Even if they lie about us, even if they spread all kinds of false rumors about us, even if they make up stories, God is our defender. He is the one who will fight for us. We just need to keep our focus on what he has called us to do, and he will take care of the rest. Don't be afraid to step out and do what God is asking you to do because there might be enemies along the way. The end result will be so much greater than any fear you might have. God will fight for you and give you everything you need to finish the work he is calling you to do. Don't be distracted by the enemies, friends. Keep your eyes on the Lord, on what he has said. Know your confidence is in him and follow him and him alone. If you'd like to read today's story in your Bible, you can find it in Nehemiah chapter 4 and 6. Let me pray with you before we go. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for calling us to be partners with you. It is so exciting that we get to do the work you've called us to. Lord, I pray for each truth seeker out there who is listening right now. I pray that you will reveal to them the special work and purpose you have for them. Begin to stir it in their hearts even now and let them hear you leading them and guiding them to what it is you will have for them to do. Lord, I pray that you will give them courage and perseverance to not give up when enemies come along and try to discourage them. Lord, shut the mouth of the enemy. Don't let his words get into our hearts, but instead, let us keep our eyes fixed on you, the defender of our faith. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, it is time to read some more reviews. This review says, hello, this is Samuel 7 and Ezra 6. We live in Fort Worth, Texas. We've been enjoying True Seekers at breakfast for a while now. Samuel's favorite episode is the Israelites being taken captive, and Ezra's favorite episode is David and Goliath, and says, I like your voice. Thanks for sharing your talent and love with us. Well, thank you, Samuel and Ezra. It's so good to hear from you. Thank you so much for listening. This review says, Aloha, this is Asa 7, Ezra 9, and Asher 4. We listen to your podcast every night and just love it. We love that we can learn about God and his character through the stories in the Bible. We all loved stories that had our names in them, but David and Goliath is a big hit as well. Your podcast has blessed us and allowed us to grow in our love for the Lord and others. Please keep up the amazing work. Many blessings to you. Well, thank you so much for that. It sounds like David and Goliath is one of our biggest hits. So, which understandably so. I love David and Goliath. That's a great story. All right. Here is our next review. She says, hello, I am a mother of four little ones, James, who is six, Jonathan, who is five, Lydia, who is four, and Josiah, who is two. We are also a homeschooling family from the Central Valley in California. We all really enjoy listening to True Seekers podcast and appreciate that the episodes are very detailed, biblically accurate, and captivating. We listen to learn more about the Lord and his truth. We have listened to almost all the episodes and often re-listen to our favorite ones, such as the story of Queen Esther. Thank you, Sherilyn, for your dedication and heart for this podcast. It has truly been a blessing in our home. Love, Andrew. Well, thank you, Andrea, and thank you all for listening. And I think Queen Esther is definitely another big hit, another favorite. All right. This review says, I love your stories. The stories help me learn more about the Bible because I really don't know that much about it. How I found True Seekers is my friends listen to it. And when they are sleeping over one day, they were listening to True Seekers for a bedtime story. Then I went on my podcast app and I typed in True Seekers and that's how I got True Seekers. My name is Gideon and I'm eight. I love your podcast. It's the best ever. And I give you 
2,000 million stars. And I live in the USA in New York, Long Island. And I have three sisters and one brother that's a newborn. And my favorite episode is the story of Gideon. Whew, well, Gideon, that makes sense that your favorite story is the story of Gideon. But thank you for leaving that review. Thank you for the 2,000 million stars. That's awesome. And I love that you found the podcast through friends. Thanks for sharing that with me. All right, this next review um, says, hey, this is Charlotte. I'm 10 years old and I love this show. It helps me fall asleep because it helps me feel safe and helps me know that my God is with me always. I also listen to it when I'm scared or sad because it reminds me that I shouldn't be sad or afraid. God is with me. I'm on episode 73. My favorite one is David and Goliath. Please mention me in your podcast. It would mean the world to me. So Charlotte, here you go. I just appreciate your review. Thank you so much for listening. Thanks for leaving that review. And finally, this message came in from Marianne. Marianne says, we love to listen to your podcast while we eat breakfast. Nate, age five, likes your stories, especially David and Goliath. Jonathan, age seven, likes all the episodes. Matthew, age three, says it helps him learn about God. We are from Norway, South Carolina. Thank you for your quality resource. Well, thank you, Marianne. Thank you, Nate. Thank you, Jonathan and Matthew for listening and for sending that in. All right, friends, thank you so much for listening, and I look forward to our time together next week.